are you guys doing other book clubs too or is this the uh is this the only thing you're doing oh <laughs> um for me i like I, i'm like holding book clubs um <laughs> i'm doing um tidy modeling book club yeah, yeah. tidy modeling with r yeah. yeah i'm in cohort three of that uh oh cohort three i'm cohort two okay yeah uh, is that and also lot... r for ds oh sorry yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, uh, we finished our cohort. I think we were second cohort for R for DS. We finished last month, I guess. And now, yeah. And we are starting another um, book club as well. Um, R for st statistics for data science, right? About this yeah, book. So yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, um. <laughs> it's exciting because my statistics was like um, so rusty and um, I just like feel all the people doing R here they are statistically I mean feeling okay because I know people from doing so but for me stat, um, statistics is so rusty because I'm from computer science so I uh, created the book club I told John that let's do this book and he said whoa yeah he's in because he's also interested in the statistic and yeah so possibly we're gonna start next month uh, for the book. And one good thing, the second uh, version of the book both contain Python and R code. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's like a, it's a bunch of things for me because I'm trying to learn some Python too. So it's oh, nice yeah. that it has the parallel code. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm working also with Python for like machine learning stuff. So I use R for data analysis, data visualization. Yeah, I think we can get started. Um, so um, thank you very much. Um, today we're gonna dive into chapter five, control flow, and John is going to uh, go through the chapter and we're gonna have some questions like at the end. And John, um, please go ahead and you can tell us about a bit about yourself before you start, and then you can dive into the chapter. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Jim. Um, hi everyone, my name is Juan. Uh, like I was saying, I'm from Canada. Uh, I'm in real estate, so not really like a, you know, what you would expect someone to, to be in here, but um, trying as much as I can to use R in my work and everything. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to be presenting uh, chapter five, control flow, and it was a relatively short chapter. So I'm hoping to get a lot of uh, um, uh, discussions and whatnot. So uh, I'll start with an XKCD. Um, so control flow is how things get executed, right? So whether you start with a loop, uh, whether it's a choice, you kind of start with an input and then based on the evaluation of that specific input, you move on to the next steps and you might loop or you might just kind of stop. I don't know, for example, you stare blankly at a screen and if you're not bored, you, your loop kind of breaks. So I don't know, just, uh, just how I thought of control flow and overall. Uh, here's a good meme, if else versus switch. Um, so yeah, I'll start with an if space else. Um, so that's a basic syntax. You evaluate something based on a condition and you do true action if it's true or you do something else if, it's, uh, if the condition is false. And here's an example, how would you use it, right? Like you want to inverse a color, you feed it a color argument. And if it's red, you turn to blue, green, yellow. And if it's not red or green, you return something else, whoops. Um, so a pointer here that I thought was important was if you don't feed it an else argument, it gives you a null. So how that's useful is, uh, this is one example, but it's in a ggplot setting. So anything plus a ggplot, uh, if it's a null, it just give, doesn't give you anything. So here I have a, if true, fill the panel background with this color. Um, but if it's false, you, you can just leave it alone and it doesn't do anything which I use quite a bit actually, um, based on an evaluation of uh, um, some metric you're looking at, you may, you may wanna add a geome line somewhere, you may wanna add a geome like text somewhere, and you can kind of control them with a, with a true and false. Um, another pointer, if you feed it a, a logical vector of length greater than one, only the first element gets evaluated. So, um, in the condition, I feed in a logical vector of two and only the true gets picked up one. 
And in the other case, same thing too, because the uh, numeric get um, coerced into a logical or the other way. Um, so you, it picks up a zero and gives you two at the end. So I wanted to ask you guys, when is this desirable? And is there like a use case for this? Uh, so for me, I don't know any, and it was the first time I had the warning, I really did not know what was happening. So it was really <laughs> strange for me when I had first time the warning that, yeah, that's that because you get a somehow strange warning message with it if you are not uh, prepared for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, I don't see actually practical usage of this because if you want to any of these options, you can just provide it um, rather than provide it. Yeah, so I'm just wondering if you would ever feed in a logical vector as a condition. Um, oh yeah, if you feed a logical vector, I mean, it's, if, it, if it is true, it means it's always one. I mean, always one. So, yeah, if it is false, it's always zero. So it is false. Um, so which evaluated the second option. If it is false, always to evaluate the second option. But uh, because here the first argument is true in the vector, so it will always evaluate to the first case, which is um, one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then zero is false if, it, yeah. if it's converted to a yeah. logical, so it gives yes. you two. Yeah, but the argument you said, um, I don't know what, um, in which case do we need to provide like, um, uh, a vector in the if else and we don't actually need the rest we only want to use the first one um yeah i couldn't really think of anything um maybe by accident you uh spit out a vector of length two and just a safe measure to only get evaluate the first one it makes sense right but would you rather throw in an error here if uh if you were writing this package I mean, I think it's mentioned in the book that you should change it, that it's a warning and no error. Or, uh, it's an error and no warning. So I think they mention it, but I can remember. Right. Because you can change the global option or something. Okay. okay. Yeah, and if you're, if you're not sure whether you're going to get a vector of length one or something longer, you should probably put in an any or an all, you know, if you're expecting that. Right. Yeah. So just wanted to pick your brains on, you know, uh, this little pointer. So that's basically the backbone of a condition if else, and then you have a vectorized version of the previous. So if else with no space is a vectorized of an if space else. So you can use it with a vector like so. Um, if X is dividable by five, you uh, return it. And if it's not, you return to something else. Um, what you gotta be really careful though is coercion. So if you uh, have two different types of true value and a false value, it actually coerces. Um, so what's happening here, true gets coerced to one. Um, and then this whole thing is a numeric vector or a double vector. Yeah. So just, just gotta be careful of this. Um, and if you, don't want to deal with it, you can use a dplyr if underscore else, it actually throws you an error. Um, so same thing here, if this is false and uh, true value and uh, false value are different types, so it actually throws you an error. Um, while this one will just kind of coerce uh, three into a string. Um, so here's how you would use an if else, but don't because it's, uh, it's pretty ugly. Uh, you can you can use it in a column setting. So you can you can do a mutate if else uh, cylinder is four return cylinder is four. Uh, you, you guys can see what's going on, right? So condition one value one. So infinite if else loop. You, you kind of want to avoid it, right? Like you don't want your formulas looking like this. I, I kind of deal with this a lot, right? Like in a in a real estate, uh, we we do a lot of uh, Excel formulas. So what you want to do instead is use a case one in the dplyr package. So another vectorized equivalent of an if else we looked at earlier, but it gives you a nice syntax. So you can feed it any conditions you want with 
uh, the value you want if this condition is true. And then you go to the go to the very end, you feed this argument, which is an else, basically. If everything else fails, you just kind of throw this value at it. Um, here's, a, here's an example I wrote. You got a bunch of dogs. And then here I want to show you, uh, you can pretty much feed in any conditions in any kind of format you want. So here I use an in syntax. And here I use an equal syntax. And I use a string r, string detect syntax. And they, they all work. Which is which is really nice. I, I I do this quite a bit. String R, string detect on a single element. So um, yeah, there you have it. Does anyone have any uh, any other types of condition they would throw at that I might have missed here? No. Okay. Um, so yeah, here's how I would write the if else that we uh, kind of I recommended not to use, and I, I just throw in a case one instead. So is four, you return return return, and then you give it an else value just in case. So same result, but a little nicer um, syntax. So then we have the switch, which is basically a case when, but it's not vectorized if I remember correctly. So similar syntax, but they only recommend you to use it when you're comparing your argument against a string. And the syntax is a little different. You feed your comparison without a double quote. So if an input is mastiff, you uh, leave it blank, leave it blank, and it falls through until it finds the next uh, value. And you have to throw in a stop, like an else almost. Um, and then, yeah, I, this was really confusing to me, like not having a um, double quote to your, to your condition, but um, yeah, it's, they're, they're, they're switch for you. Um, does anyone use switch often? Like I, I, to be honest, don't too, too much. I mean, I did use it before I knew Dideverse, so. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I use case when um, almost have the day uh, switch. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. When in doubt, use tidyverse, I guess. Um, but this is uh, this is not vectorized, if I remember correctly. That's the only difference. You you feed it a single thing. Um, okay, I'll pause there uh, for the conditions. Um, does anyone have anything to say about? the choices, so if, if, else, switch, and case one. Any tips or anything? Okay. Uh, here's a meme. <laughs> you always wanna write an exit condition. So they don't cover the loops too, too much. So I kept it really short. So basically there's for loop, while loop and a repeat loop. And they're different uh, because of their flexibility, meaning what you can write one with the other, but not the other way. So the most, uh, sorry, the least flexible one out of the three is a for loop. And we've all used this. It's a syntax like this. Uh, you iterate an item in a vector and then perform an action accordingly. So, one important pointer is that a loop assigns your item and overwrites them every single time at the, at the iterations. So I use the lobster um, object address and you can see it kind of changes every time, which, uh, which I didn't know, to be honest. Like I didn't really think, it's one of those things you don't really think about it. And then, um, yeah, they point it out to you. Also, what's important is you want to pre-allocate your output container if you had to use a for loop. So you're not... Uh, um, saying, okay, expand my container by one every single time there's an iteration. So if I can draw here. So the, what the vector function does is it gives you a vector of type argument with the length uh, of the argument too. So it gives you a nice little vector with, this is a list. So you predefine an empty list, uh, sorry, empty vector of list. And at each iteration, uh, your lists point to some R norm uh, object. 
And then once you reach the end of the means, uh, which is length of three, um, you, you have this, I guess. So makes sense, right? I mean, you, you don't have to. Uh, yeah, you don't have to kind of expand one every single time. There is another iteration, especially when you don't know it's going to end. So it's just good practice, I suppose. Yeah. I think this is one of the good practice why people were saying for loop in R is bad idea, but this is what solved the issue that for loop is bad idea. Um, if you are not creating anything new, um, this is the best way to use for loop. Yeah, this vector thing was a new idea to me. Like I always knew like you should, you know, uh, kind of define your uh, output, but yeah, I've just never seen this in action before. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll move on. Um, also another important thing, don't use the one colon length vector because uh, it works in most cases, but if your vector is length is zero, it goes backwards. So see here, like I feed it a empty vector and then length of empty vector is zero. So it kind of goes one zero. So it might have some uh, undesired consequences uh, while, while you iterate through that vector. So just a good thing to know. So you want to use seek along. I, I didn't put it here, but seek along. Uh, C one, two. So this will ensure, uh, it goes one, two, right. And not, uh, if this vector is blank, I actually don't know what it will give you. Do you, do you guys know what, what it gives you when it, you say seek along MP vector? Sorry, MP vector, did you say? Yeah. Uh, shoot. Can I go back? Yeah, seek along empty vector. So I just tried it. It basically gives you zero. It gives you zero? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not one zero, so I guess it just gives you zero. So yep. it kind of, okay. That makes sense to me. Um, so yeah, watch out, I guess. Um, you seek along. Okay, um, now we got the while loop. Um, should I stop here? Yeah, I'll, I'll pause here and kind of ask you guys, like um, per map, right? Per map versus four. So they, they recommend you to use per map every single time you can because it kind of creates that container for you. Do you know if it's like the same thing as what we're doing here? Um, is per map um, implicitly doing this, creating a output vector and, and everything? Uh, yes, I think I looked it up in the source code and it's more or less a simple loop. So it's nothing different. I, I don't know exactly, is it a four or a wide loop, but it's a loop, a base loop. So their performance is the same, right? Exactly the same, yeah. Okay. Mm. And, and you can only, I think with the future, or there's, there, there is a multi-core map, but I, I can't remember which one it is. Okay. What about uh, when okay. you... Oh, sorry. Um, Devlina was saying she, um, she thought math was optimized in C. Um, no, so, I, okay. I, what, what, what I saw in the source code, it's base R. Ah, base R. Hmm. Oh, sorry, catching up with that. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm wrong. But l last time I looked up, it was a base. Yeah, from all the look here, it somehow looks the. Do you have any input here, Dublino? Uh, just the GitHub link that I'm looking at. Um, I know I prefer map, but I don't know if that's like a, um, I don't yeah, know map. if it's a performance reason or a, preferring functional programming reason <laughs> yeah that's um, <laughs> i think both yeah. i mean in terms of functional programming and also the performance if it is implemented in c it means it will have more performance 
major? Mm, not not really, because I think it's a C loop as far mm -hmm. as I see. So if it is I, I mean the... I mean I think in the base are in the data science book it's discussed something about it. I think there's a discussion in it. And I think he also said that for loop and map is the is speed wise the same. Okay. Okay. I, I really like the way they discussed that in R for data science. I had always avoided for loops when I was learning R because you know, oh everything's vectorized, you should do everything vectorized when you can. But I really like their explanation there where human time is more valuable. So when you're mm -hmm. if you can't easily think of the problem in a map and mm -hmm. do it in a for loop and if you need yeah. to be faster, then optimize for a map. I like that approach. Mm. Absolutely. I think it's also cleaner if you first think about the problem to write the for loop. It's very easier in my head to write the right. for loop than something. Yeah. Yeah. They make the point that most of a for loop is the uh, um, kind of like the framework to do the looping rather than what you're actually doing, which is why they argue for map. But sometimes, if you know, especially if you have a history in other languages, it's easier to think about for first. Right. It's different in, like, say, Python, right? Because even in their, like, modeling practices, when they're doing, like, a k-fold, they, I think they just straight up write a for loop. There's no, like, uh, map or anything. Yeah, it's, yeah. Python is heavily optimized for, well, not <laughs> optimized, but it's it's heavily looping based. Like, it's, it's, it's better to use a list comprehension um, than to use a, uh, um, than to do a, uh, um, an anonymous function with a map, you know, whereas an R, like you'd automatically go to the, the map with an anonymous function. And well, there are no list com comprehensions in R. Right. I mean, R uh, is also like a functional programming. So forward loop was, was, is not normally in a functional, in a pure functional programming language, you don't have loops. You have to solve everything with functions. Right, it doesn't have a single input or map, map to an output. Or it can you can map a single input to an output with a for loop, but you don't have to. You can do other things. Okay. Um, let's go through the rest of the slides quickly. Yes, yeah, so while loop. I mean, the book doesn't really focus on this too too much, but let's cover it anyway. Um, Here's a syntax, right? You, you give it a condition, you do something. And as long as the condition is true, you kind of keep executing it. So you wanna, uh, you typically wanna write a stop condition unless you're doing, I don't know, something that's outside my understanding. Um, so this is what I mean, like when, when I say flexible, you can write every single for loop with a while, but not the other way. So um, you, you say a for loop is more inflexible than a, uh, than a while loop. And you would always want to use uh, the inflect, the most inflexible option. And per map is pretty much, you know, more even more in inflexible than the, than the for loop. Um, and then like, like a while loop, you, you can also write a, every single while loop using a repeat. So repeat is literally just doing um, action forever, unless you write like an if statement in the, uh, in the body and Right, it's more flexible than a while. And yeah, you want to put in a stock condition. <laughs> um, do you guys know the rep function, REP? Um, is that the same thing? Doesn't rep only cop uh, copies a or makes a vector or something like this? You get a vector out of it? Yeah, this gives you a vector, right? If I did like this. Yeah, and, and you get a vector of three A's, yeah. Yeah, okay. Is that like the same thing? Like, I mean, do you know if it uses repeat? In, in the I, mean, I mean, the repeat doesn't give you anything. Oh, okay. The web gives you the vector back. So, or you in repeat, you have to tell him that you want something back. Right, right. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all I had. Really, um, that's everything this cover chapter covered. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what we should do for the next half hour, but that's all I prepared.
All right. Um, so today the chapter is really um, not that too big. Um, so I guess um, if we have no question, uh, by the way, we have um, many chapters with our um, presenters. So please feel free if you want to present. Uh, the next chapter, which is function, is going to be presented by um, who is going to do that? Um, what the name? Uh, I think I think it was me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think after the function and environment, we don't have one to present the conditions. I guess so. Uh, so the rest of the chapters, if you are free, you can choose anyone. Um, and send it me so that we can update it and you can prepare for before the next sessions. Um, so. Hey, so I have a question actually on your, on what you yeah. said here. Mm -hmm. You said, but for loop can be slow if written in a bad implementation. So is that basically saying if you don't define an output container of length? Yeah, whatever? yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Is there like anything else though? Like anything else? Yeah, because you could practice. Yeah, because you create new, um, uh, you assign it every time if you do not create before and um, that is when it gets slower i'm trying to get the um reference where i get that one um i, I think it's also in this chapter in the iteration chapter ah okay yeah i think that's the, they are the talking about speed and everything yeah oh well, one thing i do like to use a while loop for is when i'm calling an api with uh, pagination so, you, you know, like when an API gives you like 10, uh, I don't know, 10 outputs and you go to the end, it might give you like six, right? So when you run out of the page, so I can, I can say like, as long as the output gives me 10, uh, keep going. But if it reaches the end, meaning it's not 10, uh, stop there. Like I do that sometimes. Okay. What are you typically scraping? Like uh, uh, rentals and stuff? Yeah, for work, I, I scrape the uh, like rental prices and um, yeah, all the different availabilities and stuff. So um, yeah, and some 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 days you'll have like really really bad data, so you wanna you wanna put in like extra conditions in. Um, yeah, I use while loop in that sense a lot actually. Um, while you get something and then the output is of length ten, just keep going. Anybody want to share something that they use uh, iterations and conditions for? All right, I think um, if we, um, if there are no more questions, um, we can stop here and um, we meet next week. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you everyone, um, happy to see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye.